so we have to invest in them <clears throat> we have to make sure we give them the best chance at life and having done so i think my years at green island high school have been great principal of the green island high school maxine evans is one of the most passionate committed and inspiring teachers you could ever meet With more than 35 years of teaching under her belt, Mrs. Evans became a principal of the school just over a decade ago. Teaching, she says, was a no-brainer for her. And today, she serves as educational leader, counselor, mother, and role model for her students and staff members. Principal Green Island High School since January 2011. I have been a teacher here for approximately 35 years and would have had at the heart of what I do the training of these youngsters to become great men and women in society. We have, as a school, identified with the fact that not all our students will go down the academic path full scale. And so we provide for them every outlet possible in order that they will find their own nation society or impact society in a very positive way. I'm actually from Horton Gardens, formerly called Bay Peace and later Miller's Drive. Lucy girl. So I'm, yes, I'm a Lucy girl. <laughs> coming from near Prosper Road. About three houses from Prosper Road. Um, what? Wait, one Lucy bread. Primary? Lucy, as a matter of fact, Arthur went basic school, Lucy infant school, Lucy primary, and then Lucy high school. <laughs> yes, yes. Green Island High School is located in the western side of Hanover, Jamaica, 14 kilometers from the parish capital, Lucy, and 25 kilometers from the Negro Square. Established in 1969, Green Island High was built on lands which formed part of Harding Hall Estate, a former sugarcane plantation. At the time, the school, which started with just over 500 students, was one of 50 junior secondary schools in Jamaica, which were built to offer education to children who were not successful in entering the traditional high schools. Green Island's first principal was a renowned educator, Simon Clark, who went on to become principal of the Sam Sharp Teachers College in St. James. Other principals who have served at the school are Ruby Dummett, Hayden Ford, Brian Breeze, Ansel Brown, Horace Baugh, and Ada Mitchell. As a school, we have made sure that we allow for our students to have an, a holistic experience. And as a result of that, together with the academics, we have introduced the Performing Arts program, which actually falls under the Visual and Performing Arts Department. In terms of accomplishments, it has been born out of a need to minister to our students. So you will find that we will walk away with each year most of the JCDC um, awards in performing arts, in speech, in drama, in 
music this, this year, for example, because we have acquired a slot for music in, in, in the employment of a music teacher. So the accomplishments are far and wide and we have seen most of the medals coming to our students and that is because they put their all into it and like I say it's a ministry in addition to that we have been one of the pilot schools for not just the performing arts CAPE syllabus but also the physical education and sport syllabus having had Mr. McIntosh doing a great job with Bodin Todd and later introducing to our students physical education at the Cape level. Having done so well, we were, well, the Ministry of Education took us seriously. And as a result of that, we have been offering for our students since that time, some 10 years now, uh, the program at the Cape level. It therefore means that they would have matriculated from the secondary level at grade 11 with distinctions in physical education and sport and also in the performing arts. Those two were the pioneer subjects that we offered to our students, but we us, of course had to include the communication studies and all the other fillers that they would have needed to leave with an associate degree or otherwise to leave with subjects that would now transition them into um, their graduate years. In addition to that, we would have um, allowed for students to matriculate overseas as well. So we have a great lot of our students from the um, physical education and sports department moving overseas. One such person is Chandrain Bidal, who has enrolled in university overseas, got his master's, and is assisting with lecturing there. And a number of other students would have gone on to study overseas, coming out of the performing arts training. One of the things that we, we ensure that our students do is that they sit our examinations as early as grade 9. So one of our students, uh, Demario Malcolm, is the recipient of a distinction in performing art, in drama, theater art, uh, in grade 9. He is present in grade 11. So as long as we identify the talent and notice the students are interested and we also garner some of the interest as well, then we push them, we send them forward and they usually do very well. This now promotes the program in the school so that other students who believe that they have a talent in this area do gravitate to you know, study performing arts or theater arts or drama. Sometimes the students are spotted in the grade seven to nine years so that we hone the skills, we encourage them, and they eventually find that that is their nation society. It's a big um, uh, money maker for them. So we allow them the opportunity to do as they, they, they really set up to do. So ninth grade is really a target year for some of our students. For the other students in grade 11, we had the regional prize in Cape, one of the regional prizes in Cape for the performing arts last year, June. So even though COVID came on, these are some of the areas where our students excel because it tends to keep their mind away from the stresses of their teenage years. We have also done well in track and field from the days of Odile Todd. We would have had small numbers, pockets of students who, who seek to enhance their prowess in these areas. So every now and then when our students do well, we take them out together 
to hear of the progress of our students. We are blazing our trail. As it relates to the academics, we still strive for excellence. Some of the departments that are doing well would of course be physical education and sports. We have business education. We have agriculture. And math and the language are still just about the same performance as the regional um, schools. But we scaffold the children in order to ensure that they come up to par. I tell you, my early years would say a lot, but I'll just summarize it in, um, in a few words or some words. My mom is a retired infant school teacher having taught at Lucy Infant School. So that's Pearl Humphrey. My aunt, Etta Drummond, now deceased, has also been an educator from the church that I'm, that I'm a part of and now serves at the Shiloh Apostolic Church. The persons who were employed in those years were mainly teachers. So my early upbringing and my vocation as a teacher came from the influences that were around me. Having gone to Rossi's, and those were good old days, 1975 to 1980. Went to Church Teachers College in 1982 because I did two extra years. And I thought that if I had gone back to Rossi's, I would not have gotten a chance to show who I am because a number of my older teachers, my other my teachers, were still there. And I will lift my hat to Claudette Shippey, my teacher of mathematics. But because I respected them so much, I felt that I was going to be in a closed box to go back to rub shoulders with and maybe not be able to manage as an adult in that space. As a matter of fact, I've taken that into my own practice here. A number of teachers here and staff are past students. And I give them the pep talk, pep talk. The moment they are accepted on board, I call them and let them know we are teachers together now. You're not a student anymore. So please don't be afraid of me. Get out there, do what you've got to do. We chose you because we saw greatness in you. So having come back from Manchester and I wanted to stay there, um, I decided to give back. After two years at um, Christiana Secondary School at the time, God bless the De Paz. Um, Mr. De Paz and his wife groomed me well as a young teacher coming out of um, college. But then I was, I am the eldest of my, my, my siblings. And so with four other siblings below me, I would have needed to assist mama and daddy with you know, sending them to school and supporting them. And so I decided to come back. Having come back, I had great days here when Mr. Ansel Brown um, welcomed me on board. When Mr. We call him Kai Kai in those days, Errol Clark, now deceased. When he was interviewed, he was interviewed by me, his student. And I just hold those memories dear to my heart and I use them as that which guide my, my, my own practice. Because to have your teacher, who was very, very hard, I had to work hard at mathematics to pass it. And then to be, to be interviewing the same person, to come into my own space, was an eye-opener that whatever we do with our students or children to be God's heritage, will come back to us full circle and nowadays in no time. So we have to invest in them. <clears throat> we have to make sure we give them the best chance at life. And having done so, I think my years at Green Island High School have been great. Great years. I had some sad days, I cried too. But I learned to cry with those who cry, laugh with those who laugh, and we are just one beautiful family.
the years that um, just went by, say COVID years, um, are a little different because we have new members of staff and we've got to, I have got to get down to their level and just let them know that we are human, don't be afraid. And sometimes I come with that chip in the, on the shoulder and say, you know what, the real hard knocks of schooling children is about collaboration, getting to know each other, working on issues together, challenges together. For me, it has been some bittersweet years. First and foremost, I would have been led by some great people who would have either retired and sadly some of them have passed. So it's been bittersweet years. I've been a part of the development of the institution from the days of just simple um, curricular, curricular activities that had to do with what the ministry would have promoted to coining our own curriculum to get our students to excel in whatever their areas of, of, of smartness are. So for me, Green Island has been, uh, uh, interestingly, you asked this question because I have had days when we would have had such beautiful plans and then some of our teachers would have transitioned and probably gone overseas and then we would have had to start over in some cases and retool and you know encourage others and promote others it's been bittersweet but god has been at the helm and we have we have we have waded the waters and excellence just propels us I look back and I am so happy for those years, the years we've spent here. I've missed some of my folks because they have gone on and we just continue to pray for their families. They have given so much. I'm a recipient of their work and their worth and I thank God.